Hey, what's up guys? John here. Another train derailment. Another train derailment. This one is in North Dakota. And we start to look at what's going on here. It kind of reminds me of that movie Casino with Robert De Niro. And it was like in the 80s when that movie came out. Great movie. But he hired someone to work the floor and basically watch all the slot machines. And one person hit the slot time after time after time. And De Niro came up to the guy and said, the odds of hitting this machine once are a million to one. Hitting it three or four times, it's a billion to one. It's either you were in on it or you were too stupid to catch it. But either way, you're out. And he kicked the guy out and fired the guy. And this, to me, kind of looks like a similar situation. There's a big group of people that want to say that, you know, it's, it's a fluke, just one little situation. And there's a bunch of other people that are like a Robert De Niro that are looking at this saying, you know what, if you can't connect the dots, then you know there's no hope for you and we start to look at this i mean this is absolutely crazy and we like this is nuts um before i dive into this today's video is sponsored by my company greatcreditfast.com greatcreditfast.com give us a call at 561-430-5100 if you need help fixing your credit you're going to want to have excellent credit especially when things get a little bit crazier and i think we're stepping into some really insane times 2023 i think is going to be it's going to be way worse than any any year that we've seen you know in the last few decades uh, to put it lightly so a 70 car train carrying hazardous materials derailed in north dakota this is a 1 a.m last night 70 car train derailment right we start to look at what's happened let's just call it eight weeks so we had this north dakota right this is by the way in the green is the most fertile cropland in america so you have north dakota and you have Ohio and Michigan, right? You have South Carolina, you have Texas. You have all these areas. And what do they all have in common? They all had train drama the last eight weeks. Now, am I saying they're connected? No, I'm not. But I'm simply saying, you know, what are the odds, right? At the end of the day, what are the odds? Um, then this situation here is unfolding in California. California crops lost after floods. How much? of the U.S. will feel the shortage. I didn't know this until recently. I had a conversation with my friend about it. He was telling me. Uh, I didn't realize California produced this much, but they do. California accounts for 46% of the U.S. fruit and nut production and 62% of the national value of fruit and nut crops. California leads in fresh market vegetable production, accounting for 44% of the U.S. harvested area and 49% of the national production. So we look at what's happening, right? Supply and demand. If we're having situations in a lot of these areas and California as a whole, a lot of uh, food could very well be lost. I mean, look at what's happening in Philly right now. Philly, uh, they just had a alert saying to not drink the water. I mean, they're, it almost looks like March 2020 inside of the stores. Everyone's trying to get uh, every, just necessities. They're just trying to make it, right? But to me, this whole thing is pretty crazy because I think that what we're actually witnessing uh, is the fall of America. That's what I honestly believe, the fall of a dynasty. And this is happening very slowly in the last couple of years. Uh, but I believe we're stepping into a situation in which it's going to make the cost of living here go through the roof. Everything, I believe, is going to get very, very expensive. So food getting more expensive, utilities getting more expensive property insurance more expensive, property taxes more expensive. And we start to connect everything together. 40% of all mortgages in America were taken out between 2020 and 2021. 40%. The average down payment for a first time buyer, 6%. The average down payment for a second home for a everyday American, 13%. So the median, about 10% down, about 10% down. And that was based on, you know, call it a three, three and a half percent mortgage. So the cost of that same mortgage now is 45% more on a monthly basis given today's mortgage rates are in the high sixes or maybe even low sevens for some. Uh, so you start to equate this or you look at, look at things clearly. People don't have any equity, right? As they continue to increase interest rates, people can have less and less and less equity. And so we're going to start to step into an affordability crisis in this country. And as that's happening, I believe that what they're going to do, they're going to turn the money printer back on. And they're also going to continue to increase interest rates in the short term. What is this going to do? It's going to make it more expensive to service existing adjustable rate debt. Think credit cards, auto loans, personal loans, uh, adjustable rate mortgages, home equity lines of credit. All of these things are going to get much, much more expensive. And what do people do when they're forced into a 
tight spot. They start selling off assets. That's what they do. They start selling off things to try to make ends meet. And we're walking into that now. You know, this situation, Janet Yellen, US dollar may lose reserve currency status. And they're talking about this, uh, the debt ceiling. Now, a lot of people say debt ceiling, they're just gonna raise it, they're just gonna raise it. Sure, they might, they might. You know, they've done it, they've raised it, you know, 50 times already. So uh, why wouldn't they? But if, if you look at the look on Janet Yellen's face, does that remind you of somebody or does that look like someone that's in control or that they know what they're doing? No, to me, that looks like the look of fear and defeat. That's what that looks like to me. Uh, it says, at a Senate hearing on Wednesday, Treasury Jan Secretary Janet Yellen said that if the U.S. defaults on its debt, this would result in a massive loss of the confidence of the U.S. dollar, eventually leading to the loss in status of the world's global reserve currency. Now, I saw this video on TikTok, and it kind of relates. I'm going to share with this with you because this is crazy. For the people who work numbers, I am giving you free advice that those of you who are holding dollars, you surely might go into losses. You better, you better uh, do what you must do because uh, this market is going to be different in a couple of weeks. For the people. So, I mean, that is uh, apparently the president of uh, Kenya, right? President of Kenya. So, as that's happening, on the 25th, the 25th says Tehran, Iran's move to reset diplomatic relations with Saudi Arabia was a radical break from the years of enmity between the two Middle East rivals, but it hasn't been enough to prop up its struggling economy. Before China stepped in to broker the deal earlier this month, Iran's currency, the real, had lost a fifth of its value over the last two weeks of February to hit a record low, adding to the problems besetting a ruling cleric hearing. So what is this? I'm gonna leave this in the show notes. There, you're seeing two countries that were against each other for a very, very long time now, you know, basically shaking hands, and they're all going to be moving forward with, uh, with this BRICS situation. I believe this is going to transform, or really just go exactly how this chart is demonstrating. BRICS are going to gain more and more and more power and control. Uh, I mean, you look at what they control. They control energy. They control, you know, gold. You, they, like, they're buying so much gold. They're positioning themselves to become the reserve currency. These countries are working together in uniform. They're working together. And when they bring this together, as America is you know, getting weaker and weaker and weaker, you have to ask yourself, how can America remain the global reserve currency when we're walking into a situation where you know, we, we're, we're basically losing everything, right? As a whole, we're basically losing everything. We're losing uh, our authority. We're losing our, global, our petrodollar status as we start to move green. Uh, we're just basically printing more and more money. But here's, a, here's another thing that I think no one's talking about that I, and I'm not saying this is happening. I'm not saying this is happening at all. But hypothetically, since I mentioned a movie earlier, let's say another movie took place. Let's say in this movie, you, were the ruler of the world, right? And of the ruler of that currency, the reserve currency in that movie, right? What would you wanna do if you knew for a fact that that reserve currency was going to plummet? You would likely try to move as much of it somewhere else to either convert it into another currency or into gold. But you'd want to basically find a way in which you could take hundreds of billions of dollars and have a reason to do it somewhere else and then you would be able to you know, exchange it for something else, right? That's probably what you would do if you were the supervillain in that movie, right? Interesting. What do you think about this entire situation? What do you think about the uh, global reserve currency and all of these situations happening? Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, John, you know, train derailments happen all the time. I'm not saying that they don't, but I'm just simply saying eight weeks, uh, you know, what are the odds, right? Like, like uh, the movie Casino, what are the odds? All these different areas, um, big problems coming for America, massive inflation is coming for America. A high interest rates are going to be coming for America. Position yourself with cash, credit, good credit, and get out of adjustable rate debt. Get out of adjustable rate debt. Try to grow and scale your business. Think of it this way. People before would say $50,000 is a lot of money or $100,000 a year is you know what people strove for a few years ago. That was considered success. You know, that was what I was always told when I was younger. Go to school, go, you know, go to school for four years or eight years, make 100,000. You know, my dad always wanted me to be a dentist when I was a kid. You know, make a hundred thousand, hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, right? But with what's happening in the world, that hundred and twenty thousand dollars, you know, probably has purchasing power today of sixty thousand or seventy thousand. 
what is going to happen if we start to step into this inflationary environment? You know, that once great salary is not going to be so great. So what I would think is probably a three or four X your income to probably offset some of these costs and be sure to get out of adjustable rate, high interest debt. Uh, what do you think has happened to America? Drop it below, hit the like button, subscribe right out of my second channel. It's going to be an interactive uh, a call and show on a podcast. I have a new studio. It's almost done construction now. It'll be done the first. We're going to decorate and design it. So probably the third or the fifth. Uh, we'll have our f first show there. So uh, be sure to subscribe over there. And um, again, if you want to fix your credit, you need good, good credit. We'd love to help you at greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. Give us a call at 561-430-5900. And um, follow me on Instagram in the uh, banner above this video. And uh, catch you guys later.